Hello, welcome to Time Capsules. I'm Carl Qualls, professor of history at Dickinson College. We've constructed this video series to illuminate some moments in European history. For my students, this series serves as a backdrop to our class discussions, but all viewers are welcome, and we hope that you too will enjoy unearthing the past. As the Industrial Revolution took hold, artists increasingly created for new patrons, not only the church and aristocracy. This allowed for greater autonomy. Rather than following rigid convention and classical forms, Romantic era artists told stories representing emotions, ideas, and national pride. Legends and folk tales were at the heart of many songs, stories, and paintings. Romantics saw the mystery in the world, were awed by nature, and often embraced the mystical. Love for a partner or one's homeland were equally frequent as national spirit and consciousness countered enlightenment ideas of universalism and served as a foundation for nationalism. Romanticism spoke to the irrational part of humans, their feelings, fears, and desires through literature, art, and music. The clash between thinking and feeling, rationality and irrationality, enlightenment and romanticism continues to this day. The Enlightenment emerged in various parts of Europe in the 17th and 18th century as a movement and a new way of thinking. The Enlightenment differed sharply from a religious belief that relied on faith or ideas unsupported by evidence. People wanted to know how things worked and started to search for universal laws of nature. In science, this can be seen with Newton's laws of gravity and force. In philosophy, Enlightenment thinkers such as Hobbes, Locke, and Rousseau tried to discover universal rules for human nature and government. The American and French revolutions were both inspired by thinkers who believed in universal human rights and people's service to the greater good. During this age of reason, enlightened thinkers argued that knowledge was derived from experience, experimentation, and observation. They believed that peace and harmony could come from rational quests for truth. In short, the human condition could be perfected. Romanticism emerged in about 1770, but reached its peak between 1800 and 1850. Literature in this period revitalized themes found in medieval romance novels and poems. The term romanticism is derived from the time of medieval romance and the largely chivalrous acts and heroism in the name of love. The movement came to embody ideas we consider romantic, newfound expressions of the self, nature, and nation, rather than universal notions of the Enlightenment. Nations also began to take an interest in folklore and folktales, and a return to rural living as opposed to the dangerous and busy life of cities with emerging industries and 14-hour workdays. Romanticism was a revolt against enlightenment and modernity, urbanization, and the Industrial Revolution. There was a thirst for beauty and emotion in life, rather than gray city living and the tedium of industrial labor. A number of philosophers were both products of and catalysts for the shift from enlightenment to romanticism. Jean-Jacques Rousseau is typically characterized as an Enlightenment thinker. However, his writings on the education of children discuss children as a purest form of imagination in society, untainted by rationality that may destroy creative expressions. Friedrich Schelling wrote Naturphilosophie, in which he showed how man and nature are intertwined, as opposed to the factory worker isolated from nature. Georg Hegel also served as something of a bridge between Enlightenment and Romanticism. He argued that individuals had their own consciousness, but that the individual consciousness merges with others to create the consciousness of a country or a nation. Romanticism spread across Europe. The English writer William Wordsworth, with contributions by Samuel Taylor Coleridge, wrote a collection of poems called Lyrical Ballads. In what is often described as a manifesto for English Romanticism, the writer sought to find the naked and native dignity of man, the spontaneous overflow of powerful feelings. The poems were written in a more accessible vernacular and mixed natural scenery with religious symbolism. The main characters in Lord Byron's poems, Don Juan and Child Harold's Pilgrimage, are men of emotional desires rather than rational thought. The French writer Victor Hugo, in works like Les Miserables and Notre Dame de Paris, emphasizes love and compassion towards others, including criminals and outcasts. His countryman, Alexander Dumas, used historical themes, which were common in Romantic literature, in his many adventure stories like The Count of Monte Cristo and The Three Musketeers, in which emotions like vengeance, anger, and love are common among his heroes. In Germany, the great Johann Wolfgang von Goethe is best known for his tragic play Faust, based on an old legend. The young Faust, an accomplished alchemist, 
finds his life to be empty and no more knowledge to satisfy him. He then sells his soul to the devil in search of pleasure. This is clearly not a rational story and shows the mysticism that is common in the Romantic period. Danger and darkness also loomed in children's stories. The brothers Grimm based their fairy tales on folklore they learned from traveling across the German states. In their well-known story Hansel and Gretel, the imaginative and irrational title characters wander off into the woods where they meet a witch who wants to eat them. We cannot read such a story as one of enlightened reason. Instead, it conveys the irrational and the mystic embedded in a national folk tradition. In Polish writer Adam Mickiewicz's epic poem, Pan Tadusz, we hear a cry to a lost country as he expresses longing to return to the beautiful and natural scenery of his homeland. Romanticism in Poland helped to cultivate a national identity in a country that had ceased to exist since the late 18th century partitions and resultant immigration throughout Europe. These exiles sought to define their Polish identity through literature, art, and music derived from Polish culture and traditions. In his short life, poet Aleksander Pushkin, Russia's national bard like Mishkevich, Goethe, and Shakespeare much earlier, wrote volumes of poetry like Yavas Lubil, filled with emotion, all written in the vernacular. In literature, we see all the themes of the Romantic era, sensual and spiritual love, national longing, folk tales, reverence for nature, mysticism, and so much more that distinguishes Romanticism from the rational calculation of the Enlightenment. Romanticism in the visual arts were often sublime. The emotion in the art makes the audience question how much we can control in the world around us. For example, J.M.W. Turner, a British watercolorist and landscape artist, used delicate colors and few distinct lines so that it appeared that nothing held the colors in a particular space. In Rain, Steam, and Speed, the Great Western Railway, the viewer sees nature overpowering industry. The storm is stronger than the train, and nature is superior to humans no matter how advanced our inventions become. Turner's fellow countryman, John Constable, in his Salisbury Cathedral from the Meadows, shows the quintessential romantic landscape where rural life is better and more fulfilling than the industrial urban life, where there is hope after the storm. In Eugene de Lacroix's Liberty Leading the People, the image of France's Lady Liberty inspires hope for freedom amidst the chaos and terror of the revolution. The German landscape artist, Caspar David Friedrich, often praised the power of nature. In Wanderer Above the Sea of Fog, the light comes from nature and man is both conquering it and insignificant in the midst of it. Much like Friedrich, Russian painter Ivan Ivazovsky's paintings of the sea, like his Ninth Wave in 1850, show the power of nature and our small place within it. Nearby in Poland, we find many romantic painters, like Franciszek Lampi, focusing on nature and landscapes of castles and cathedrals, evoking a longing for the Polish past. Throughout this time capsule, you have been enjoying the music of our romantic composers Giuseppe Verdi, Richard Wagner, Ludwig van Beethoven, Frederick Chopin, and Michael Glinka. We will be discussing music more as the semester continues. As the French Revolution transformed into the Napoleonic Wars, people across Central Europe began to understand themselves as part of a nation. Germany and Italy were not yet countries, and many other peoples, for example Poles, Czechs, Hungarians, and many others, were under the thumb of the Russian and Austro-Hungarian empires. Across Europe, Romanticism allowed each nation to express its culture and tradition, like folklore, landscape, and history, to manifest a national identity. Thus, Romanticism played an important role in the developing of nationalism and in the construction of new nation-states, like Germany and Italy in the 19th century.